Hi, I'm Taya from The Little Guy again. In this clip, I'm going to be focusing on just little hints and tips that we think will be really helpful for you to get up and running and on your way. First, I'm just gonna focus a little bit on gas, using your uh, little guy on gas and just some of the challenges that come there. Then I'm gonna move on to how to create great steam pressure. Cleaning out the head of your system, so using the little Allen key that's in the kit to do that. Then I'm gonna move on to repeat cycling. So for those of you that have already had your two coffees and you wanna make more, just ways of cooling your machine down quickly. Then I'm gonna talk about some cleaning and polishing ideas, so how to keep your machine looking really nice and shiny and new. So let's start with gas. The challenge you'll find when you're using a little guy on a gas hob is that they are designed to disperse the heat outwards, which is fine for your pots and pans with the larger surface area. The little guy's surface area is a lot smaller, and that's why you'll get your best results using the induction cooktop or any other electrical element for that matter, as they are the heat source is in direct contact with the whole area of the boiler base. The boiler wall runs vertically between the inside of the four bolts and the outside of the recessed sectors. So the gas flame really can't be any wider than a two centimetre diameter. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about steam pressure for texturing and heating your milk. Steam pressure is a result of your back pressure. Back pressure is a direct result of your heat being driven up through the machine and being resisted by the coffee in your coffee basket. Chances are, if your extraction is looking really good, you're gonna to have tons of pressure for steaming your milk. Remember that your steam pressure depends entirely on how your extraction is looking. So if you're getting a great extraction, but you're still not getting a whole lot of pressure for your milk, your problem is almost certainly situated in your steam tip. So let's talk specifically about your steam tip. If you have an original Otto machine, you'll have this steam tip. It has a female thread that runs down inside the steam tip and has a little clear O-ring that sits at the base of the thread. If you have a little guy machine, you'll have this steam tip with a male thread that sits outside the steam tip and has a little black O-ring that sits at the base of its thread. For both steam tips, it's critical that the O-rings are in great condition as this is what's gonna seal the steam tip to the steam wand. The little hole on the end of your steam tip is 0.9 of a millimetre in diameter. It only needs to have the slightest blockage of 0.1 of a millimetre for that to affect the flow of the steam coming out into your milk jug. The best way to make sure your little steam jet is kept perfectly clear is to give it a nice big purge every time you finish texturing your milk. If your steam tip does get blocked, the best thing to use is a small paper clip as the blunt end is much more effective than the sharp end of a pin or a needle. It's important to remember that at the end of a cycle, after you've finished texturing your milk and you've turned that steam knob off, sometimes a little bit of extra moisture can be left in your steam wand. And when you start a new cycle later on, as it starts to heat up, those little drips of water can drip out the end of your steam wand. It's not leaking, it's just a little bit of remaining condensation. After you've finished giving your steam wand a nice big purge at the end of a cycle, it's important to make sure that your steam wand is closed off completely as the machine cools down. That ensures that the two brass parts I'm about to talk about remain in a, remain in a sealed position as the machine cools down. If you undo your steam knob, you'll see the steam pin. This steam pin runs through the steam assembly and mates with another piece of brass. It's important that after you've textured your milk and given your steam wand a purge, you close your steam wand so that these two pieces of brass cool together. Use your Allen key to remove the screw on the inside of the shower screen and then use a butter knife to run between the outside of the head seal and the inside of the head and that will remove it and loosen it because it might get a little bit stuck over time. So you've made a couple of coffees and you want to run another cycle. This is a solution of cooling your machine down quickly, but I need you to bear in mind that you need to be very careful as your machine will be really hot at this point. Pick up your machine by the two black handles, lift it up I very carefully into the sink, remembering to only touch your group handle and your black steam knob as the rest of your machine will be very hot. Open your steam knob to start releasing that leftover pressure. 
And now you can turn your cold tap on to cool it down really quickly. When there's no more steam coming out of your steam wand, you can unlock your group handle, unlock the boil lid, and flush that out with cold water. So now you've refilled your boiler, lock your boiler lid in and drain out any excess water. So make sure to tip it upside down and really give it a good shake to get any water out of the cavity. Dry your machine with a cloth or a tea towel and it'll be good to go again. You'll notice water flowing from the boiler base. If you look under your machine, you'll see a little hole that's in line with the neck. That's just there to help the water drain from the cavity. So for cleaning, warm soapy water will do the trick. Just leave your group handle and the boiler lid in place so there's no chemicals or soap suds that get into the system. And with polishing, a generic silver polish should work really well. Just remember that any polish of any kind can leave a really slight scratch mark. So it might be worth just testing it on a really small area on the bottom of your coffee jug before you start on a machine. We do quite a lot of travelling and we like to take our little guy with us everywhere we go. We find that these Pelican cases are perfect for doing that, so I'm just going to show you how best to get everything in there, including your tamper out and your tamping mat. So the product you're after is a Pelican 1300 case. We don't supply these, but you can find them quite easily online. For packing your Pelican case, start with your little guy, with your steam tip facing up, get your handle and put it in, it'll fit quite snugly. Put your tamper in your basket. And just use a small cloth to separate the machine from an upside down coffee jug. And if you've got a tamping mat, this will sit on top of everything else. We hope you enjoyed our video and if you require any further support, please shoot us an email at support at thelittleguide.info.